WBAP on FM at 93.3. Keep connected, DFW. Always very happy to have Congressman Roger Williams join us. Uh, certainly a day after a debate is, is a, a very smart day to have you on. Congressman, thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks. Good to be on. And also, I want to remember 9-11 today, too. That's right. Yes, 23rd sir. anniversary. Yes, sir. Yeah. What, uh, what did you think of the debate last night with uh, Kamala Harris and uh, former President Trump? Well, I thought it was pretty intense. Uh, and I thought that uh, it really, as a repressed reporting, I thought it was three against one. Uh, and I thought the, nets were, the networks were biased. But all that being said, uh, I think that there was a lot that wasn't covered. I mean, when you look at the, 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 uh, the two people running the debate, I mean, uh, she started talking about raising taxes. They never followed through. They never asked her about tax and unrealized income. She beat him up, tried to beat him up on tariffs, but they uh, never followed through on why the Biden administration kept tariffs. They kept the, the Trump tariffs. She didn't have to answer that. And she had no plan on the border. Got 20 million people over here illegally. They're coming every day. No plan on the border. I thought she was very vague in her, her answers. Uh, they talked very little about energy and uh, uh, and the border. Uh, so, you know, and she just, what she did was just continue to bash him. They, a lot of name calling going on between both sides. Uh, I thought he was strong on Ukraine. He put his statement out on Ukraine. And of course, she was never pressed about the 13 people that were killed in Afghanistan. She said she supported uh, Biden on that, which was a, which was a tragedy. So, I mean, there was a lot that wasn't discussed. They the, like to say the, uh, the level, the sound level of both of them was, uh, was pretty high. Uh, I think at the end of the day, I think if you were for Donald Trump, you're still for Donald Trump. If you were for Harris, you're still for Harris. I think that both they kept their base, and it gets right back down to like elections are in this presidential cycle, that you're in the middle, and who's in the middle or who hadn't decided yet uh, is still the ones that you're going to have to get the vote out to win on November 5th. This is Congressman Roger Williams with us. Congressman, hang on just a couple of seconds. Time to get an update on traffic and weather on the 1721 now. Here's Monty Cook. <laughs> I-30 westbound, Jim Miller uh, left lane taken away there, the back up to St. Francis. Now, I-35 east southbound at 1171, Maine got one clearing, but still pretty heavy in the area. I-35 W northbound right around Hattie, a couple of left lanes are blocked for a wreck. That's a 15-minute backup stretching back to I-20. Our next update within 10 minutes with traffic on the ones. I'm Monty Cook, News Talk A20 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3. From the WBAP Weather Center, sunny to partly cloudy, breezy, and 87 for the high today, low tonight, 68, up to 89 tomorrow, and then hotter and drier Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right now, 71 in Fort Worth, 71 in downtown Dallas at WBAP. Your opponent on the stage here tonight often asks his supporters, are you better off than you were four years ago? When it comes to the economy, do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid, and I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up the middle class and working people of America. I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And that is why I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. Congressman, do you think uh, that was the best non-answer you've ever heard? Well, it was pretty good. She thought it through. And, of course, that's the big question people are going to ask themselves. Am I better off today than I was yesterday under this administration? But there was not, again, follow through. All she talked about was she, she's named what her plan is, but she has no plan except to tax businesses, uh, to put more regulations on business. And that's her plan. And she didn't get a chance to explain it. They never followed through with her. Let me ask you this. What does Donald Trump need to do between now and the election to actually secure a victory? I think what he has to do is he has to say what I call the basics, which he's really good at. He needs to talk about the border. He needs to talk about the economy. The economy is still the number one item in everybody's mind across the country. People are hurting. But how are you going to, how are you, how are you going to secure the border? How are we going to fix the economy? We need to cut taxes, cut regulations. He needs to talk about that. Uh, we need to talk about uh, 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 security and, and, like I say, on the border, we've got 20 million people over here. We need to talk about regulations. We need to talk about supply chains. Everything that he's great at that people are begging for, a businessman running the business of America, is, I, is what I want him to stick with. And that's what he's best at, and nobody's any better. And, he, and that's a winning formulation for him. The problem is he's got to find a way to get the word out the way he believes, other than the networks, because they're not going to help him a bit. 
they're not going to help him. It was evident last night. It was horrible last night. But he's got to get the message out. We all have to that support him. Uh, have to get the message out and be the be the voice. But uh, look at the media. We know we don't have the media, uh, and it's just going to be who gets the vote out. People are mobilized on the Trump side. They understand this is a chance to turn our country back around. So it's going to be a sprint to the finish here. Fifty days to go, and uh, I believe he'll be ready. And she still has no answers. Uh, she needs to be asked questions to say what is what is your fix for this. And she takes no responsibility for Biden, the Biden administration. She was part of it. Everything she was saying she didn't like, what didn't she fix? The president brought that up. Fix it now. You can. You're still in office. But she got, but she she was not for, forced to answer any of that. Why does the Democrats the, the, call it the, the women's health bill? You know, I don't know of anybody, anybody that doesn't want women to have good health. Why don't they just call it the abortion bill? <laughs> well, look, at everybody wants everybody to have good health sure uh, the abortion issue the abortion issue is a, is a 50 50 issue in most cases i thought uh, he did a good job in outlining the way it is now with roe v wade being overturned by the supreme court and passed it to the states i mean that's what it is and uh there's uh, and he explained that pretty good but again no follow-through from the media uh, on asking her about what she thought about that this is Congressman Roger Williams with us this morning, 725. You want to get that last one, one in, Hal? The last Always, que- the traditional always, last question. As a businessman, Roger Williams, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Weatherford, are you selling any cars? Is the car business uh, across America healthy? Across America it is. The car business, though, is in somewhat a turmoil because we don't uh, know the, where the shoe's going to drop on electric vehicles. So EVs are not not a uh, it's not an economy. So, but the car business is good. We always can sell one more. But uh, we're blessed right now. The industry is pretty good. Interest rates are coming down, and that's a big deal when people go to buy their car. What's their monthly payment? And I think they're finding they can pay a little bit more now with the rates coming down. That's a good thing. Thank you, pal. Best to your wife. Good to hear you. Okay. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Roger Williams.